He's missing. Jesus Christ is missing. We'll find out about the resurrection. Breakfast by the sea with Jesus. And when the core of faith is attacked. He's still missing. All this and more coming up next on Quick Study. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you are. My name is Rod Him, And I'm Janice. This is Quick Study Television. Thank you for joining us today. And as we look at the schedule today, we're seeing that we're teaching on the resurrection. In fact, we're talking about Luke 24 and John chapter 19 to 20. Hey, Jesus Christ is missing. His resurrection is shocking. Well, he's missing, but he will be found, and he will be found because he has risen from the dead on the third day. So that and more coming up as we study on. Right now, Corey is here with Bible History and Archaeology. Corey, what's going on? Today, I am continuing my study that I've been conducting earlier in this week about theories surrounding the crucifixion and resurrection of Jesus Christ. Theories about the crucifixion and resurrection of Jesus Christ. Wow, that's going to be a good one, Corey. All right, do you know? We're talking about breakfast with Jesus. Do you know what Jesus prepared for seven of his disciples when he appeared to them at the Sea of Tiberias? There's all these questions that are going on. This is great. All about the resurrection and all these questions about Jesus Christ coming your way. Get your Bible out and your pocket guide so we can continue. century Judea, if you were going to make up a story about a god and you wanted to create a religion, you likely would not choose for this god to be crucified. Right now, we are going to explore why that's the case. During the time of the Persian Empire over the Middle East, about 539 to 336 BC, crucifixion was widely used by the empire as a form of punishment and intimidation. So much so that crucifixion is often looked at as originating with Persia. However, the widespread use of crucifixion right away points to the practice being developed much earlier. Assyria, India, Scythia, ancient Britain, and even the Greek world all practiced crucifixion. One of the challenges to learning about crucifixion is that its cruelty was seen as distasteful, so it often wasn't spoken of in contemporary literature. And when it was, details were not often given. One thing was and is believed, however. Crucifixion is said to have originated from sacrificing victims to the gods of the underworld. Perhaps the most known application is from the Roman Empire. By the time that Jesus was crucified, it appears that Rome had it down to illegal physical science, prosecution, flogging to cause humiliation and pain, and then securing by nails to a beam of wood, often with a crossbar at the top so that hands could be nailed independently. If death was wished to be delayed, a piece of wood resembling a small bicycle seat would be fastened to the cross, relieving some of the body weight. Crucifixion became so common during the Roman period that this horrific execution, normally saved for criminals and Roman traitors, was more than once used in mass killings. In AD 70, during the siege of Jerusalem, it is recorded that General Titus crucified up to 500 escapees a day. While not every detail of every type of crucifixion is known, it is very clear from ancient sources that crucifixion equaled shame. 
from the words of Paul the Apostle, the revulsion of Greek Seneca, all the way to prejudice ancient graffiti. The shame of the cross was humbly carried and magnificently defeated by Jesus Christ. In our Western culture today, it really does not take much effort to find outrageous claims about the history of Jesus Christ and specifically the crucifixion and the resurrection and the gospel narratives just being completely made up or completely contradictory. I mean, of course, the documentary series Zeitgeist uh, really didn't help uh, the situation much, but serious historians or people who know anything about the historical method, uh, it's, it's pretty easy to just write those off as people just making stuff up, which is kind of funny because uh, that's what those people are claiming about the authors of the Gospels. They're saying, well, the, go the, the Gospel authors, they just made stuff up. So their response to these Gospel authors making stuff up about Jesus is for them to just make up more lies about Jesus, which really doesn't make sense. I mean, if you're going to come against an entire faith that our Western culture really has been based upon, then at least do your research. I mean, there are some legitimate philosophical things that you could bring up and, and, and some legitimate historical points that you could question the Bible on. I mean, some spelling errors in the, in the transmission of the text, you could bring that up and we could have a discourse on that. But just claiming that this whole Christian thing, this whole Jesus thing, was just made up by a group of guys, it's so historically unfounded. But you know what? I'm personally very happy that those claims have been made because over the last 20 and, and even 40 and 50 years, so much historical research has been poured into this topic of the historical Jesus. And what has come about from that is uh, how amazing amazingly solid of a foundation that Christianity really does have to stand upon. Uh, most historians, and I really do mean most, the majority of critical and scholarly historians accept the fact that Jesus Christ was a real man. And yes, they called him Jesus the Nazarene because he grew up in Nazareth, that he really did have his 12 disciples and that he created a, uh, a religious problem for the leaders of the day and that he did claim to be be the Messiah and that he was indeed crucified and three days later something happened and whatever that something was there was enough eyewitnesses to experience that that they really sincerely believed that Jesus was risen from the dead and that is why uh, this religion spread across the Roman Empire like wildfire so those are facts that uh, historical facts that are believed to be foundationally true by the majority of historians now whether you whether or not you believe Jesus Christ was the Messiah whether or not you believe the miraculous accounts is something different, but it just goes to show you what uh, skeptics really can add to the Christian faith. The resurrection of Christ is a shocking and stunning thing. No one has ever established this performance without the help of trickery or forgery. But Jesus Christ did it alone. He changed the course of history forever. This is the story of his resurrection. The details from yesterday's gospel in Matthew 28, 1 to 15, offer some insight that's not available in today's coverage. The stunning story tells details in a different way, not to make us doubt, but to fill in the blanks. The truth of the resurrection is still shocking. It's still astounding. Let's explore. Luke 24, verses 1 through 12. Now on the first day of the week, very early in the morning, they and certain other women with them came to the tomb, bringing the spices which they had prepared. But they found the stone rolled away from the tomb. Then they went in and did not find the body of the Lord Jesus. 
And it happened, as they were greatly perplexed about this, that, behold, two men stood by them in shining garments. Then, as they were afraid and bowed their faces to the earth, they said to them, Why do you seek the living among the dead? He is not here, but is risen. Remember how he spoke to you when he was still in Galilee, saying, The Son of Man must be delivered into the hands of sinful men and be crucified, and the third day rise again. And they remembered his words. Then they returned from the tomb and told all these things to the eleven and to all the rest. It was Mary Magdalene, Joanna, Mary, the mother of James, and the other women with them who told these things to the apostles. And their words seemed to them like idle tales, and they did not believe them. But Peter arose and ran to the tomb, and stooping down, he saw the linen cloths lying by themselves, and he departed, marveling to himself at what had happened. Luke chapter 24, verses 1 through 12. Thank you for staying with us. It is great to have the people with us here at Quick Study Television and Bible Discovery TV. Luke 24. Now that is the gospel today. Luke 24. We are studying the resurrection of Jesus Christ. Now remember that Jesus Christ had said, and all that we've read so far has led up to this point. This point being the resurrection of Jesus Christ. We studied it yesterday. And today, our study continues as we focus on the, uh, the scene of the overview, which is strong resurrection. Well, that makes sense, and that's good, because that's exactly what it is today. And as we focus on this, and as we take this challenge, my beloved people, I will tell you right now, I'm so excited, I can't hardly sit here and stand it. But anyway, if the reading assignment is Luke 24, John chapter 20, verses 21. And uh, that reading assignment is perfect if you're reading in association with our chronological reading guide. You need to do it. And then we're going to focus on Luke chapter 24, verses 1 to 12. Now remember that if you have the pocket guide, there are four, four key points in there. I'm going to study three of them today because I don't have time for four. But we're going to look at three and we're going to get us started. If you don't have the guide, you need to write for it. We're going to do, keep doing this. We're going to keep publishing the guide next year. You need to write for it. Anyway, let's look at the scripture. Watch this amazing. Now on the first day of the week, very early in the morning. That's very early. You need a coffee then, I'll tell you. They and certain other women with them came to the tomb. They brought spices, which they had prepared. Why? because they take spices to prepare dead people. Back to the scripture. But they found the stone rolled away from the tomb. And then they went in and they did not find the body of the Lord Jesus. Now, two things I need to tell you here. Number one, spices are for dead people. They went to see somebody dead and his body. They didn't find him. Number two, the stone was rolled away. The stone is that thing, that's gigantic thing that's in front of the tomb that nobody could get through. Plus, he was guarded. That Jesus Christ was guarded and stoned, uh, stoned in front of the tomb and all that, it's ridiculous. They must have known something. And Jesus Christ, I mean, he didn't care. It just all went away because he was resurrected. Now, that brings me to this point. Jesus Christ was missing. The events surrounding the work of the resurrection were shocking. Remember that uh, Pilate and the chief police and everybody put all their guards around it. They, they didn't really care. Just Pilate was like, yeah, okay, whatever. Just make sure he doesn't get up. But the people tried to put the guards there. The guards became fearful and Jesus Christ was missing. And they went there and they did not find him. They didn't find his body. Now, with that in mind, let's go to the next set of scriptures. It says, and it happened as they were greatly perplexed about this, that behold... Two men stood by them in shining garments. And then they were afraid and bowed their faces to the earth. And they said to them, why do you seek the living among the dead? I love that line. He is not here, but he is risen. Remember how he spoke to you when he was still in Galilee, saying, the Son of Man must be delivered into the hands of sinful men and be crucified and on the third day raise again. 
I love this part. The reason I like this part is because they keep talking about when Jesus said, don't you remember that he said that? And they're, they're like, yeah, he, he did say that. They were thinking he meant resurrected sometime in the future. No, it was supernatural, it was real, and it happened then. And it's still true today. I want to tell you, we're still in the resurrection period. Now then, that brings me to this point. Jesus Christ had spoken to them about the resurrection. He told them that he would raise again. He had said this. He had spoken to them, beloved. He said, I will raise again on the third day. He had such a, a long speech when he rose Lazarus from the dead. And they didn't understand him totally. And they didn't realize it. But he was talking about then. And they begin to realize, wait a minute. He meant now. And so that's interesting. Let's go back to the scripture because it's good. Okay, so then in Luke chapter 24, verse 8, he says, and they remembered his words. I love that part. And then they returned from the tomb and they told all these things to the 11 and to the rest. It's true, guys. He did it. And it was Mary Magdalene, Joanna, Mary, the mother of James, and the other women with them who told these things to the apostles. Now the women, look at what's happening here. What's happening here is the women are telling the apostles, get this straight, you got to get this straight. The angels told the women, and they ran into Jesus, and the women are telling the apostles. What's wrong with that story? Now think about this. God uses the women to announce to the apostles that he's resurrected. Now that's interesting, and it brings me to this point. Jesus Christ was with them. He did not go to heaven, never to be seen again. He was and is with us. Now, he's resurrected from the dead. He's ascended. He's at the right hand of the Father, but his Holy Spirit is here. He's with us. And right now, at this time, in this place, Jesus Christ is alive, and he's well, and he is working. And we are working. And those who are willing to work with him are enjoying his presence and having a good time and realizing that he is real. He is real. I mean, if you don't know he's real, then you've got a problem because he's real. And I want to tell you something. You can be sick and thrown out and all kinds of things, but if you know he's real, then nothing takes that spot and nothing takes that place. He will take you and use you. He will make you and a part of what he's doing. And as you populate heaven and, and raise up the people around you, you'll say, Lord Jesus, help me to pray for the lost. And they will come in. And if you're lost right now, Jesus Christ is using me and this program to reach you. What are you going to do with Jesus? He taught me what to do and how to do it. Come to Jesus. Say, Jesus, I love you. I need you. Help me. Restore me. Forgive me of my sin. I believe you rose again. Amen. study of the crucifixion of Jesus Christ would be irrelevant. It would be incomplete without also conducting a historical investigation into the claimed resurrection of Jesus Christ. So let's do that now. As an event that would shake the entire world, influencing the tide of history so continuously, no incident can stand against the resurrection of Jesus Christ. According to the Gospel of Matthew, people began right away trying to explain the miraculous. The Pharisees paid Roman guards to say Jesus' body had been stolen from his sealed tomb, without the guards seeing or following. Though this bribed invention didn't do much to stop the spread of Christianity, archaeology has revealed that it likely influenced the ear of the Emperor of Rome known since 1878 an intriguing artifact named the Nazareth inscription may shed light on the official Roman response to Jesus's resurrection. As its name suggests, it came from the city of Nazareth and is strongly believed to be an authentic inscription from the first century. The inscription opens as an abridged version of an official decree from Rome. It's concerned with the stealing of entombed bodies. What makes this unusual is that this isn't grave robbing. No valuables are being taken, only bodies. 
It also appears that this decree is aimed specifically at Jewish and Christian Jewish lifestyle who commonly use the family tomb. The inscription also links the offense of stealing a body with an evil plan, a deviously thought out calculated offense. And the punishment is very severe, brought before a religious tribunal and if found guilty, capital punishment. This inscription, dated to before AD 70, fits the time frame, the content, and even the culture that was reeling in the aftermath of Jesus' resurrection. It was a dangerous belief, replacing the king of Rome with the king of heaven in a time period of revolt. It appears that Rome's response was to place a decree in the very spot this leader was said to have come from, a place that even identified these Christians called Nazarenes. The stone was placed in Nazareth. When is it right? When is it wrong? There are principles guiding us in this fallen world to make good decisions about when to fight and how to fight. Join Corey, Janice, and Rod Hembry as they uncover the facts of war and learn what the Bible says about holy war. This video is critical for every believer to know now. When is it right to go to war? For your copy, write to us and send $25 as an offering or more to P.O. Box 150, Murraysville, Pennsylvania, 15668-0150. In Canada and the rest of the world, write to P.O. Box 456, Orangeville, Ontario, L9W5G2. You can also get this particular video at www.biblediscoverytv.com. For safe giving, give there. Thank you for staying with us on Quick Study Television. I want to tell you what we're going to be teaching next time on Quick Study. It is actually this, Acts chapter 1 to 4. That's right, we're starting the New Testament. The Holy Spirit changes things. God promised to keep the disciples in his care. We'll talk about that and more on the next Quick Study program. Make sure that you join us tomorrow. Mm -hmm. What's do you know? Well, here it is. Do you know what Jesus prepared for seven of his disciples when he appeared to them at the Sea of Tiberias? Preparing meaning breakfast. <laughs> okay, what did he prepare for breakfast, Corey? <laughs> All right, I'm going to say... Fish. Fish? She says fish. Fish it is. Can you imagine Jesus cooking you breakfast? He not only prepare, prepared breakfast for his disciples, but he also served them. And he served them two things, fish and bread. Really? Mm -hmm. Fish and bread. Fish I, I can't think of that bread. as something that's uh, particularly... Breakfast is my favorite meal of the entire day. It is, yeah. Can you imagine fish Jesus... Fish and bread. Making you breakfast. It's true. How sweet is that? It's very sweet, sort of. I, I, don't, I don't think fish is good for me because of my culture. Anyway, it's a different story. But I can tell you this, that we have the, uh, the Do You Know or the uh, DVD video of uh, Bible Just War, War Doctrine. Just War Doctrine. Bible Investigators. Mm -hmm. And if you want a copy of it, it we're going to offer it again here. It is P.O. Box 150, Murraysville, Pennsylvania, 15668-0150. In Canada, P.O. Box 456, Orangeville, Ontario, L9W5G2. Make sure you write for this video $25 or more for the video. And then, of course, you can call us at 724-733-8336. In Canada, 519-940-8338. Also remember, it is viewable on the internet mm -hmm. for the Bible guy. That is uh, www.biblediscoverytv.com. Don't forget the TV. Biblediscoverytv.com. Now notice the little box at the bottom. 
That is a Roku box. You can buy those at Walmart. They're all over the world. They're good. Hooks up to your internet, hooks up to television. You can get one of those and watch us. Look for the app Bible Discovery TV free. That's what you want to look for, and you can get that. And so those are the information, that's the information on all of the website the stuff that we offer. So make sure, want to again reiterate mm -hmm. that unless you're on the mailing list, either the internet or the written mailing list, you will not receive the Bible guide for 2015. So make sure that you get that acquired today because the mail gets real busy in December and nobody gets through. In the meantime, make sure you also send your prayer requests so we can do this. The resurrection event was one of those things that changed the world. No one could have predicted it, but our Lord told his disciples that he would raise from the dead on the third day following his death. Why were the ones who followed Jesus Christ so shocked to discover that his dead body could not be found? There is great strength for living when we realize that God is bigger than our present thinking. There is nothing that Jesus Christ cannot change if he wills to change it, we must continue to understand that Jesus Christ changes things. With that, we pray, Lord, help me to see you and understand that you change things in me. The Strength in Your Mind segment is a great segment in the program. Where does the Bible actually say while Peter was still speaking these words, the Holy Spirit fell upon all of those who heard the word. Very interesting question. Now notice it fell on those who heard the word. That's interesting. It's the New King James Version of the Bible. If you think you know where it is, then go to BibleDiscoveryTV.com and click on the bottom part of the screen, left part of the screen, takes you to all the answers and all the scriptures. But I want to encourage you to come to Jesus Christ and know him today because he's real. He brought you this program right here. This program is brought to you by Jesus Christ and the followers of Jesus Christ. And say, Lord, I need you and I love you and I, I have a problem right now. My problem is I can't get past it. I can't get out from under that difficulty. And I believe you died on the cross and you rose again on the third day. Help me to understand you. I pray today, amen. Thank you for spending time in God's Word with us today. Remember, I need your help. We are supported by viewers just like you. If you could send an offering in any amount to keep us on the air, pray about it. We would appreciate it.